Oh, it's Trent. Hope everyone's having a good day, good week so far. I know it's only Monday, but entertaining story today. Anyways, we got, I climbed the school to evade the police story time. So this is different from when I climbed the high school with that girl and we had to sneak away from the cops. It's a whole different story. This is like what I would call a layered story because there's so many like interesting and uh, not so much like funny, but just interesting uh, elements to it. And you'll see, you'll see what I mean. First of all, though, before we even start the story, I was just at my grandpa's, right? I'm always there before my stores because I'm visiting my puppy. She lives there. So I'm there and I'm leaving and I left right at four. So like I knew I was going to hit rush hour. What I wasn't expecting is right at the entrance of the neighborhood, I call it an entrance. It's not like a private neighborhood. There's no gates and stuff like that, but it is kind of like just on a main road in the middle of nowhere. And then there's a neighborhood like there's no other neighborhoods kind of around it. But right at the entrance of it, there was a three car crash. Now you can go right out of here. You can go left out of here. If you go straight, it's the hospital, right? So I needed to go left and there's three cars there one was completely totaled another one was like like the glass was shattered out of the front of it and there was um what do you call them the big pillow things why can't i think of what they're called a uh airbag the airbag there was airbags everywhere and then the third car was it wasn't that damaged but it was in the grass like kind of tipped over so i'm like geez man what's going on here so i had to sit there for like 20 minutes until they finally moved the car in front of me then i was able to leave but i was like come on dude like I was leaving, you know, rush hour starts roughly around what, like 4.30. So I was trying to leave before then. By the time I left the neighborhood, it's a 20 minute drive home. And now it's like 4.20 rush hour. That sucked. But anyways, let's get to the story. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So to start this off, at the time, I'm hanging out with a dude who he wasn't, I won't say he's a good influence, but everybody thought he was cool when we were younger, right? He was only a year older than me, uh, than most of our friends. I say us because we all looked at him as a different person, right? This dude was a beast. Like he was just, when it came to street stuff, he was just good at it. I don't know how else to put it, right? I'm not trying to, I don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm not, I just know I'm not trying to like say it's awesome that he was doing all these bad things. It's just no one else was doing them and he would do them, whether it was like, I'm not going to go into the crimes he committed, right? Because I have respect for this dude, but he did some wild, wild things. And we all kind of looked up to him because of that. He was the first one out of anybody, not even in our group, but just around our school, anything to be selling weed, right? Now I, because I helped his brother out one time, his brother was getting jumped and I, I didn't even get involved. I like just yelled kind of to stop because I did that. His brother liked me, right? So I was kind of like a I was the little bro in this situation. So when we'd go to places, when he'd go to places to sell stuff, I'd go with him. I'd make a little money for helping out, right? And I'd get to do things for free. You know what I'm saying? So I was always cool with it. I didn't care. I thought it was cool just to be involved and no one else got to do what I did with him. So I never even felt like I was getting little bro or anything. Like I was just like, hey, he's letting me tag along. I'm just gonna, you know, appreciate this and do whatever he says, basically. So on this day, we're going to play basketball. We'd go here a lot to play basketball. And most of like our group that played basketball, we were all tight, right? Like there was no issue. Sometimes there'd be a beef because you know how it goes to pick up basketball. Maybe you catch an elbow to the ribs or like someone shoves you during a rebound or something like that. Like there'd be little fights, but never any like real strong beef for days. So everyone there kind of, like I said, we we're all tight. So we didn't really sell to those people. There was like a big group of like 10, 15 of us I mean, occasionally we would buy off of him, but because we were all so tight, it was never like, like we weren't the customers. We were just the group. And then people would come to this school to pick up stuff from us. I had nicotine sometimes, then he had bud, and then I would help him with like package deals. It was this whole crazy thing. And it was awesome, right? Like I, I know it's not good, but it was awesome. Okay. I was like 15, 16. I felt like the shit. I felt like a businessman. I'm watching all the mafia movies. I felt like I was involved. You know, I felt cool. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. So on this day, we're doing the same thing. We're sitting at this, uh, school playing basketball, football, and smoking, right? Mainly smoking, but a lot of basketball too. So we're sitting there all day and we had a rivalry with the cop, the cops in our town. I'm not going to say cops. It was just one cop, right? There's probably 30 or more cop cars that roam our uh, city slash town, right? I don't know what it counts as. I think it's a city, but 
yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cops, but there's one cop because he was my school cop in high school before the alternative school, regular high school. He was the school cop. He had been there for years, and he uh, I don't know if he's still there now. But anyways, we'd see him all the time, right? Anytime there was a call about anything to do with teenagers, he would go because he knew most of the teenagers in the city or town, right? Like he knew a lot of us. We'd see him a lot, and he didn't dislike us, but he didn't like us either. He knew what we were doing because he'd caught, he'd catch me in school with vapes and stuff. I ran from him one time. He caught me with a card at a football game, like little things like that. So he knew what we were doing. He would just come along, and he never really did anything, right? He never searched us. He never arrested anybody, but he always kept an eye out, and he was always like, "Hey, it smells interesting over here," right? So you got to think, I wasn't really expecting him to do anything, right? Like, I just didn't think he would. I thought he kind of, in a small sense, had our backs. Like, we had a little rivalry, but he knew we weren't, like, hurting anybody. We were just making some money. So I thought maybe he was on our side. That's not what happened, right? So we're sitting in, like, a special spot. Instead of sitting on the basketball courts where we usually were, sitting up against the wall of the school, that's what we'd always do. We were up on this, uh, like we climbed the stairs and there was a second store door, right? I'm sure it was just part of the, I mean, it was part of the school. I don't know what it was for, but it might've been like a fire exit or something. Cause it was those black stairs with the big gaps in between them. And they were like, uh, like if you fell and hit your knee, you'd scrape it. Those kind of stairs, like industrial stairs, right? We're sitting at the top of that. And it's like a little square at the top with a all the way around railing. So like four people can fit on there and then the rest have to sit on the stairs or stand. We're sitting up there rolling up, right? And we could see the whole like left side of the school. We couldn't see anything from the right side though. But if a cop was coming, they have to come from the way we're looking at. Like there's no way they could sneak up on us. So we weren't worried about it because even if they came while we were rolling up, we could hide the stuff in time and there were so many of us, we could form a circle, like we could do something, right? To not get caught. Well, what we weren't expecting was multiple cops. Three cop cars pull up, right? The first one to get out was the school cop, right? The big dude, I look at him and I'm like, oh shit. And I'm not gonna say his name on here, but to the group, I'm like, yo, so-and-so is here. And they're like, oh shit, right? So they hide the weed stuff and I had a lot of nicotine on me. Like I had just gone to the gas station where they didn't card me. And I had money because I had been helping this dude out for like three weeks now. So I loaded up. I probably had like, I don't want to exaggerate. And I don't want to say less than I had either. I probably had like 17 or 18 vapes on me, right? And all all uh, nicotine, but still for our age and what was going on at the time with all the kids and the vaping stuff, I knew I'd get in some maybe not serious, serious shit, but it was enough. It was enough to scare me. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't think you can get a felony for nicotine, but I didn't want to test it. You know what I mean? So we're standing there and they start walking a group of four cops. Two of them stayed by the car, I'm guessing, in case we tried to run. And four of them came walking in like an assembly line of cops, like the marvel of cops, dude. And they start walking towards the stairs. The rest of the kids had already started walking down, but I was staying by, you know, the, the main dude, you know, the cool one, trying to see what he was going to do. And I'm like, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, I'm not, they have no reason to search us unless they smell something. I'm going to walk down there. You know, you could do whatever you want, but I'd be careful because I'm sure they're going to search us or search you at least. Um because I wasn't as confident, right? I wasn't going to go up to the cop and be like, you can't search me. I know the laws. I don't know the laws, right? He said what he said. I don't know if that was even true or not. Like, I have no way of knowing because I don't read into laws that much. I just hear stories and hear laws and shows and stuff, but I don't really know all of them. So I didn't want to take any chances. I'm trying to think, right? I had my backpack full of vapes with me. I put it on my shoulders and I'm looking to the left. This is like a fire escape. So there's a big like yellow pole to the left. I'm guessing it was um, not a pole. It was a drain, but I'm guessing it was just, you know, for like a rainwater, but it wasn't a normal, uh, like a normal gutter, you know, white gutters, like how they're plastic and stuff. This was like a metal pipe, but it was still like used as a gutter. I just don't know what to call it, but it was this yellow pipe. It was big, it was thick and it had like, it was like circular and there was space between the wall and the pipe to put your hands in, right? So I'm looking at it and I'm like, I could climb on this and possibly get to the roof. And then I'm sure there's another stairs like on this side, on the other side, right? I was not risking it. And I had walked there with a friend, with that dude. 
So I didn't have my bike. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything except my backpack. I wasn't worried about, right? So I get up on the pole and I hear the cop say to me, he says my name because I know him from school. He's like, hey, Trent, come back down from here. Like, come here. We want to talk to you. We, I don't, I can't remember if he said we want to talk to you or we want to search you. I doubt he'd just say we want to search you though. So I'm sure he said we want to talk to you. I wasn't taking my, my chances. I've heard that line a lot and it never ends well. Never, if you can... I'm not saying don't run from the cops, okay? I wasn't necessarily running. I guess I was. But I was evading a little bit. I mean, I hadn't done anything wrong that they knew about to this point. So I had no no reason to really talk to them. But everybody else was. And I was like, not me, right? Not with these vapes. So I get on this pole. And I'm trying to go up. But I realize that the pole curves upwards. And I'd have to have some insane grip strength to hold on to that, right? I can slide down, but I'm just on the other side of the school, like barely, like I'm like a left turn over. So by the time I get down, they could already be there. I'm looking to the left and there's this window sill, right? And I'm not going to lie. It was above the basketball hoop. So I'm probably 10, like 10 to 11 feet in the air. Maybe, yeah, probably like 11 to 12 feet in the air plus my height, you know? So however tall I am standing there, I was scared. Okay. I was scared because I had like three options go down this pole, try to go up, which I couldn't do, or go along the windows until the next pole, try to get on the other side of the school and slide down. So that's what I did. I'm on this window. I go to the next window. I'm shitting myself. My hands are shaking, dude. And it's not that high up. Like, yes, I could break an ankle or maybe like, like if I jumped and landed and even if I rolled with it, it would sting. You know what I mean? Like your legs, if you jump from high up, it's going to sting but I don't think I'd break my legs. Like it just looked like it would hurt my ankle probably. So I was thinking about going down, but I was like, no, I got to make this jump to the window. Not really a jump, just like a extra reach, just like this, just like, oh, right like that. So I do it one more time. I take a deep breath. I'm sweating. I was super scared. And I was like, okay, I got to just, I got to go down now, whether they're here or not. I took a look over my left shoulder, didn't see any cops went on the pole, slid down. And as I'm going down, my backpack, which was on my back, flew up over my head. So the top part was like right here. I couldn't see anything. And I'm just trying to go down this pole. But like I said, there was those little black like connector things. So I couldn't just slide down it. I had to like slide, hit my knuckles, slide, hit my knuckles, slide, hit my knuckles. So right here was getting bruised up. Like I could feel how bad, like how hard I was hitting it against the things. It wasn't that far, like I said, 10 feet. So I get down there in like, I don't know, 12, 15 seconds. I look to my left and I see a cop just starting to come around the corner of the school. I have probably 30 to 40 yards away from him and I just go, right? But because I start running, the backpack flies up over my face again and I feel the vapes all like right here, like roll over onto my head, even though they're in the bag. And I just took my backpack off and carried it like a baby and just started running, dude. And when you're running out from the way I was running, there's so many different possibilities you could go. You could go straight, which goes right towards a lake and like a beach area where there's a lot of people. You can go right, which will take you onto the main road, or you can go left, which will take you into the woods behind the school. Where do you think I went? I took a hard left. I went straight into the woods because, you know, I know that sounds scary, but the woods are definitely safer to run from cops in the middle of the street. So I just ran down the woods, didn't hear anybody chase me, didn't see anything. And I ran all the way home, dude. And then I texted my friend asking what happened. He said that someone got searched, but it was someone that had nothing on him, thankfully, or they had something on him and they slid it to somebody. That's probably what happened. But I was just happy not to get caught, dude. But I did feel like Mission Impossible climbing on the damn, like the cement window sills. Like that was scary. Thankfully, it was, I mean, good and bad that it was an older school i mean it wasn't all modern so i could climb on it but like i could have easily stepped on something that just broke off but i didn't so who cares who cares but thanks for watching you can become a member if you want to get access to special videos special shorts uh early access to videos live stream access and special polls if you comment i'll do my best to answer all the positive ones i always do and if you're going through something you need someone to talk to for real my instagram is linked in my youtube also the same name as my youtube so if you look up fit 699 on insta dm me i'll get back to you within a day or two you're not alone but thanks for watching be safe go bears peace out